Which do you find harder, being you or being someone else? <laughs> I don't think I find either of them any more difficult than the mm -hmm. other. I don't think I find either of them difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Do you find any rules or um, suggestions that you get from your theme park performances? Do you ever try to implement them into your personal projects or you ever feel like, uh, realize you subconsciously implemented them? What do you mean by rules? Um, say like you are used to playing a certain way, uh, do your normal job, if you will, at the mm -hmm. theme park. Uh, do you ever see yourself just out of habit, uh, standing a certain way, playing a certain way, singing on a certain key, because either it's a used to, a habit, something you may have even picked up because it's a suggestion that you want to implement? Oddly enough, no. I mean, mm -hmm. those, those two worlds don't really mingle like that. That's interesting, because yeah. I know for myself, I worked at a theme park at one time doing photography, and I've started out of habit implementing how I photograph between a studio I worked at, a theme park I worked at, and then my personal projects. I right. didn't know if that was similar when it came to music or if it was various. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, looking at your background in music, you're not just a singer-songwriter. You've also done some composing. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, well, yeah. I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I've been composing for a long time and, and writing. Um, I wrote my first uh, string quartet piece when I was in high school, uh, when I was 14. And it was lousy. Don't wow me. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but then I, I started uh, writing on run, a symphony in high school as well, and um, though I never finished it, I think I just mostly because I realized it was lousy and I was doing everything wrong. But I had to do it anyway, <laughs> and so I just kind of kept composing after that. And uh, my brother owns an animation company, so he would give me odd jobs composing for that, and still does. But oh, uh, you know, so the the occasional TV or film thing will come across mm -hmm. the wire, and I'll get a chance to score something for it, and uh, and I really enjoy it. It's just another avenue for me to deliver art. What do you find difficult, if anything, in composing versus writing lyrics or performing or playing an instrument? Uh, difficulty? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes getting past writer's block can be a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's just something that every writer has got to learn how to do. Um, Oh, yes. And there are lots of methods that I've come up with that sort of help me do that. Um, you know, you can change your, your surroundings or your scenario. Mm -hmm. You can, um, you know, start free writing. You can drink copious amounts of caffeine, and that actually will sort of jump you out of it and, and help you think another way. But uh, that, that's been the biggest difficulty for me. Mm -hmm. Coffee works best when it comes to my writing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um you said that sometimes it helps when you change your environment or surroundings. Is there a particular place you like to go to when you compose or write, even play? Well, not necessarily. Um, I, I play in so many different places that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, 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 I think it's more the action of getting out of where you are and going somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, even doing something else, you know, a lot of times if I've got writer's block, I'll go do the dishes or I'll go, you know, um, just take a walk or something like that and do some other mundane task that will engage my left brain and oh, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, sort of free up the right to think about something. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because I've done that one before. I've, I commute about two hours to work Monday through Thursday and during that long commute, I tend to just record myself from my phone any yeah. poetry anything that randomly comes to my head <laughs> it does yeah. happen um let's see is there any one particular performer or group that has um inspired you or you've enjoyed working alongside i like to work with a huge variety of different people mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, and I've, I've gotten to do that so far in my life. And I, I, I plan to continue to create those kind of opportunities. Mm -hmm. For instance, in the album that I'm doing right now, uh, you know, I'm, right now my Kickstarter is funded, but I'm trying to get additional recording money to include more people. And, um, you know, every next person you want to have work on your album is going to cost you more money. So mm -hmm. I went out trying to find more so I can do that. Oh, wow. Speaking of the Kickstarter, I know you started that on October 1st. Mm -hmm. And it spread quite quickly, and you raised the money within a few days. Mm -hmm. um, I have one fan, Jen. She asked, before the Kickstarter, you seem nervous starting one. How does it feel knowing that you actually accomplished your goal within just a few days? Well, it feels fantastic. Um, I'm sort of in a weird place with that right now. Um, mm -hmm. You've caught me at a funny time because it's been a really interesting roller coaster of emotions doing the whole Kickstarter. And, you know, I, I was very nervous going forward because every time I've done a Kickstarter in the past, it's been with someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it was my money or theirs, whether I was just helping them to succeed or, you know, whatever, and I was never scared about it because there were more people involved. This one is me. And so if this one fails, <laughs> there's a lot more like I failed involved in that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, it, it was one week. One week went by and we were funded. And, it, you know, $35,000 is a lot of money. Oh, yes. And <laughs> it happened super quick. But then it was just, it just like hit, boom, hit the doldrums. And just like to, you know, we... We're now at 36.4, um, and you know, we're like a couple weeks later or something like that. So it's definitely taking its sweet time. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm hoping that we can get some additional funds in there. Nice. With those yeah. additional funds, you mentioned you wanted to uh, bring on other artists and do some different collaborative work. Mm -hmm. it, are there any particular artists you're wanting for this well, project, there are, or yeah, can you I, say there, there are some that that are there are possibilities right mm -hmm. now that could possibly be on the album, and I can't discuss them, but oh. I'm incredibly excited about the possibilities. <laughs> I'm sure we are all excited about the possibilities, especially yeah. when they're the ones you can't discuss. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool, but <laughs> you know, I'm not holding my breath. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to hold your breath. Got to breathe a little bit. Especially with that singing. <laughs> As Mr. Very, Miyagi said, no breathe, no life. <laughs> this is true. Um, various prizes were given um, for the Kickstarter at different increments. Everything from warm, fuzzy thank yous to a day with you to a recording session. What mm -hmm. can you tell us about the various prizes? What is available and what do people have to do? Um, well, um, you know, they're all right there on the Kickstarter. If you go to kickstarter.com and you look for, uh, best ride of your life or Dan Franklin, um, mm -hmm. you know, it'll pop up. Uh, it's me in a nice thirties, uh, double breasted suit. That's a real deal suit, by the way. Um, that is awesome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> eating cotton candy, uh, in front of a red background, which all came to me in a dream. Um, <laughs> this entire album has come to me in dreams. But, um, you know, right there on the Kickstarter page, it'll, it'll show you everything. There's some really interesting things. A couple of them were limited and they're already gone. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, you know, like the studio souvenir and the, uh, the Franklin family cookbook idea, which uh, is kind of awesome. Um, <laughs> Do you guys want... like to cook? or? Yeah, I like to cook. My wife likes to bake. My All of my extended family and, uh, you know, everybody, they all like to cook as well. So there's a lot of interesting ideas for recipes for that. Awesome. But, uh, you know, there are other things in there like, you know, like an annual pass holder um, and you can spend a day with me at theme park. Um, or, uh, you know, there's there's one where we'll go out to breakfast um, or, or whatever, um, mm -hmm. you know, those kind of fun opportunities to hang out uh and then there's the the recording artist one which is um, oddly enough that's that's around the price that i would charge to do that normally anyway uh, i just decided oh, to make wow. it a kickstarter reward so <clears throat> uh, yeah and that one's really exciting uh, two people have pledged that amount and so i'm going to work with two artists already um creating that's something awesome. interesting and not commercial <laughs> and not commercial do you enjoy um, giving what opportunities you have had, do you enjoy giving back to other artists and new artists 
in that manner, helping them, whether it be a recording session or helping them promote their Kickstarter or Absolutely. what have you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I do that a lot. Um, it's weird. I've sort of become like this Kickstarter consultant um, <laughs> by accident. Um, I just sort of know the ins and outs of, of that mm -hmm. website really well and um, sort of what it takes to make it happen and, um, and what it takes to fail miserably. 